Hello and welcome to a gameplay for seasons. Now it's been an awfully long time since we've had any news on Hogwarts Legacy. However, come the 9th of December at the Game Awards, we may potentially get an update. I won't go through the background to exactly why that is, as I've already covered it on other videos. The general consensus is we might. You can't say more than might because a few things have come and gone and we haven't had one, but this looks the best bet so far. But as I say, it's been an awfully long time since we actually had any news on Hogwarts Legacy. So much so that on this channel, we've been thinking about all the different elements of the game. And we've come up with a big list of questions that we currently have. Which I think, considering we're about to get a news update, is probably worth running through to see when we do get an update, how many of these questions we actually get answered. As I say, the 9th of December, that's the date for your diary. Make sure you put that in there. If you'd rather I just tell you about it, then hit the subscribe button. And we'll tell you exactly what we do or don't get on that date on this channel. Now I have 37 questions, so on this video I'm going to run through the questions super quick. Now for pretty much all these questions we have already made videos, so if you want a bit more information on any of these questions and any discussions around it, you can go for a back catalogue or else you can put a comment and I will attach the link so you can go straight to it. But let's get straight into this video then. So the first of our 37 questions is when will this game release? You'd like to think when we do get the update we are going to get a proper date. Currently we know it's 2000. 2022 and that is all we know most people are expecting it towards the end of 2022 but at the moment it's all guesswork so hopefully get a release date but many people want to know will there be quidditch in this game and if we do have quidditch what will it be we already know there will be some sort of quidditch in there because there is a quidditch pitch but whether that is just for cosmetic reasons or whether you're going to get detailed world cup quidditch sort of game within this game or somewhere completely in between those two options isn't really clear now, will Albus Dumbledore be in this game? I've put a poll out on this channel and it's become quite clear that most people do want to see Dumbledore in this game. However, they most certainly don't want him overpowering the game. It doesn't have to be about Dumbledore. Maybe just have him there for a bit of an Easter egg. Almost more interesting than Albus Dumbledore is his brother or even his sister. So Aberforth and Ariana. I know Ariana didn't go to Hogwarts. However, she's a really interesting character and she was around in the late 1800s. So if they could somehow feed her into the game, I think that'd be very interesting. Now, our very last video was about pets or animal companions, you might rather call them. Though they will undoubtedly be in the game, we, you can already see some in the trailer we've had so far. The real question is around, will you get different perks to the different animals? Or is it just going to be you've got an animal and it will essentially do the same thing in a different way? I'm very much hoping that this could be the first game that really explores all the different animals and gives you different perks with each. Next is, will we get Nigellus Venus Black in this game? Again, we know he's around at this time. It seems very, very likely we will get him. There's a debate at the moment who exactly he'll be. Will he be the potions master? Will he be the headmaster? Will he be something else altogether? Again, we just don't know. But the one thing I do expect is he will be in this game. On the subject of characters, we are obviously going to be there with other students. And there are lots of characters that we know about in the Wizarding World universe who would be around the age of students in the late 1800s. For example, Bethilda Bagshot, perhaps she could be a student at this time. And there are lots of others who potentially could be students. who are all quite interesting from the history we currently have from Harry Potter and other sources. Now I'm fully expecting we are going to have a Patronus in this game because we've already seen there are Dementors. However, the real question is how bespoke will it be? Will we just simply choose which animal we have or will it in some way reflect our character and be given to us? Which I think would be the more interesting approach as it does seem from what little information we have at the moment that this game is going for an immersive approach which to me would be if you are given the Patronus based on the way you play. Will any of the Deathly Hallows pop up? We know all of them were around at the time, obviously you've got the Elder Wand, Resurrection Stone and the Invisibility Cloak, they were around at that time. It's unclear who had the wand, we know the Invisibility Cloak was with an ancestor from Harry Potter's past and we know that the Resurrection Stone was a piece of jewellery on someone's finger. So even if they don't play a big part, they could definitely pop up in the game. The next thing I'd like to know is what exactly is Ancient Magic? We've been told Ancient Magic, which to me is probably a catch-all term for you can be really powerful, you can make up for the fact that you join in year five and quickly catch up with all the other students if, which is kind of another question, if you transfer from a non-wisdom school. Again, that's a bit of debate at the moment. Is it going to be that we simply have transferred from another wisdom school and therefore going to have lots of powers? Or are we simply going to go from the non-wisdom school we were found late and we're going in year five? Personally, I suspect it's going to be a second. However, again, it's just something we don't know yet. 
Will there be a good evil spectrum? The important word there is spectrum. We already know there's going to be moral choices, which suggest you can either be good or not, but it's the real spectrum and how detailed they go within that. Can you be kind of in the middle? Can you be a little bit good, a little bit bad? And does that affect the game in some way? That's what makes a game much more immersive than if you simply have a digital good or bad, which, to be honest, is what you see in most games that have the option to either be good or evil. I said we join in year five. The question that comes from that is, well, how many other years are we going to have? Are we going to just have year five or are we going to have year five, six and seven? Which again leads to another question, which is, will you carry on after school? Now, I absolutely was expecting that not to be the case. I think we'll just end either at the end of year five or at the end of year seven. However, interestingly, another poll I put on the channel an awful lot of people expect that we will be able to carry on off school and get some sort of job. So next up in terms of locations, we know we've got the grounds of Hogwarts, we've got Hogwarts itself, we've got Hogsmeade, we've got the Forbidden Forest. We'll be really interested to know what other locations we have. From the portrayal we've had so far, there's clearly a scene which is Azkaban, or could be perceived as Azkaban. However, it's unclear if that was just a scene of all the Dementors leaving, or if it's actually a place that you can go. And in terms of locations, one of the most iconic places in the Wizarding World is obviously Diagon Alley. And I'm not massively suspecting that Diagon Alley will be in this game. However, interestingly, again, on one of my polls, consensus seems to be that people are actually expecting Diagon Alley to be in it. And that is where they think we're going to be getting our supplies from, which I think is very interesting, would be fantastic if it's the case. The only reason I don't necessarily think that is I know you can fulfill all your supply needs at Hogsmeade. And since you know that's in the game already, that's what I'm suspecting it may be that we get our supplies from. However, if Diagon Alley is in there, it's going to make a lot of people very, very happy. And wherever it is that you are going to be buying your supplies from, comes the question of how are you going to be able to pick your wand? Hopefully you are going to be able to pick your wand and you're not just going to be given it. Will that be a quiz? Will it be just choices? Will it be based on some other options you've set? And how detailed will that be? And will they take account of things like core, length and wood type, which all affect the wand? And will that actually affect the spells when you cast them later? And talking about quizzes, comes another question, which is how will the sorting ceremony work? Again, you'd imagine it's going to be some sort of question-based thing where you answer a bunch of questions and then you get offered a house that the source hat thinks you're in. And then, much like Harry, you get the option to change it to something else. That's how I suspect it would work. However, we don't know for sure. Something I'm very interested in, in order to give you a bespoke experience, is will you get to pick your friends or will they be pre-prescribed for you? Now, of course, in a story-driven game, you are absolutely going to have characters that are sort of thrust upon you. But in terms of your companions, will you be able to pick? If there's a character you don't really like, are you going to have to drag them along with you because the story wants you to? Or are you actually going to pick a different friend and those are the ones going to go with you? Again, it really determines of how much of this tread your own path, be your own character that they go into, which will determine how much of that sort of thing they do. And that again leads into the question of how different will the experience be per house? Is it just going to be cosmetic? Is it going to be really different? Are they going to give you different missions, are they going to give you different perks and abilities and spells and animals? There's quite a big place you can take that to the point where you could give a very different experience where people may want to play through four times because it is so different, or it could essentially be something that's a five minute difference and actually essentially the game's the same no matter which house you're in. And talking all about the details, I'd like to know how detailed the classes will be. Because again, that's something that you could have what we've seen from a game like Bully before. The classes were good, but they didn't massively feel that different. And you kind of completed them and moved on. Now you could do that, or you can make this a real big part of the game, where it really matters if you turn up, matters how well you do, and really affects how good you are as a witch or wizard. I'm really hoping they'll be very detailed. For me, one of the things I'm most looking forward to in this game is to feel like you actually go to Hogwarts. And to me, you have to have detailed and decent classes to be able to do that. And that leads on to, will we be able to sit our owls? And then further, will we be able to sit our newts if we do go through to year seven? But then the even more interesting question, if we are allowed to sit these exams, is to me, will the results actually matter? Will it matter if you get an A or B or whatever the grade you get? Does it affect the game in some way? If it did, I think that'd be great because I think that would make the classes worthwhile. Moving slightly away from that is who will the antagonist be? We've seen a masked character or masked characters in the trailer. It could be that this is a completely new character or characters that we've never seen before. Or maybe it's someone from the past we have heard of. So it'll be interesting to know what's going on here. Touching back slightly on characters which will be in the game, I'd be very interested to see if the Sacred 28 can be in the game 
those are the 28 wisdom families you'd expect an awful lot of the students we do bump into while we're there are going to be from the safe 28 so it'd be just interesting i'll be there ticking them off as i see them because i think it'd be quite interesting if they do put them in so an example of that is the malfoys the weasleys the long bottoms and so on and so forth and on that note, I'd like to see if we have a ancestor of Harry at Hogwarts at that time. Again, if you just had it as a bit of an Easter egg, I think that'd be interesting. But I think it's nice to link this game to the other events that have happened, but not in an overpowering way. So we're almost there with the questions. And the next one is around two things which I think are quite iconic of the Harry Potter series, which is firstly the Hogwarts Express. Will that be in the game? It 100% was running at the time of this game, long before the time of this game. It won't be the Hogwarts Express that we're used to, because that was built later. But it absolutely was running. You're going to be at Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade Station's there. I would like to think you've got the Hogwarts Express. But whether you will simply have it in a bit of a cutscene or able to interact with it and sit on it is something I'm quite interested to know, because like I say, it's so iconic. And one other item, which again, wouldn't be what we know from the Harry Potter series, is the night bus. The night bus, again, actually did exist in the late 1800s. So if a wizard or witch got lost, they could summon it and it would take them back somewhere. An excellent way to get around in a game like this. But as I say, obviously, it's not going to be a triple decker bus because that came around a lot later. Give this the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know if there's other questions you have which I haven't covered and I'll see you on the next video.